I've got tarot, I've got oracle, I've got tarot and I've got oracle. The ritual tarot. No, that's not what this is. What is this whole video if not playing with my collection? They don't feel very different. They feel quite different. Clearly I don't know. Hello everybody, it's Sylvie. Welcome or welcome back to Tarot Magpie. I hope you're doing all kinds of good. Today I am talking about collage decks. Collage is arguably and perhaps certifiably my favourite style of tarot or oracle deck. Um, I recently acquired a delicious new collage tarot deck to my collection and I also had a comment on a video recently asking me to compare the Ritual Tarot and the Voyager Tarot. So I've decided to do that today and talk to you about collage decks. So I'm going to show you my collage collection. This is a little bit of like a self-indulgent video for me to make. I just get to play with some of my favourite decks and take you through the decks in my collection. I've kind of roughly split them up. I've got some analogue collage. I've got some digital composite collage and I'm also going to compare the ritual and the Voyager tarot because that's been requested and they are also they're they're different but they're similar in ways they both diverge from the Rider Waite Smith quite significantly in terms of a lot of the imagery so it's hopefully actually a helpful comparison to be making without further ado I'm going to get into it and I'm going to take you through my collection I've got tarot I've got oracle I've got tarot and I've got oracle so I'm going to do analog and then like digital composite collage I'm going to begin with the tarot. So since I've already mentioned it, I am going to briefly flip through the Voyager tarot. This is was one of the first collage decks of any kind in my collection. I think only one or two. Oh my goodness, is that right? I think only one or two, yeah, of the other decks in this video predated this in my collection. This is also one of the earliest examples of a collage, an analog collage deck. I received a comment on a video recently saying the Tantric Dakini, which is right here, was, an, was earlier published, uh, but that's an oracle. This is a tarot. So, so there's that. I think this might have been the earliest analog collage tarot deck, but don't quote me on that. Uh, this is weird and wonderful. This is quite a reworking of the system as well. I've currently got in order because I am going to do that flip through comparison, but I don't reach for this nearly enough and I really, really should. I also pulled this out recently for my guidebooks video. You can purchase separately um, the way of a great oracle or the way of the something oracle, which is a really extended in-depth guidebook, really getting into it about this deck because this deck was created as a bit of a updated evolved tarot system. And that deck, that deck, that guidebook really kind of explains everything and then brings together all the different facets that went into this deck. Totally love this crystal suit. Crystals is the kind of swords replacement, I think. And like, obviously, Obviously, I love the crystals because look at that, it's stunning. And then Worlds here is the pentacle suit. And this, I don't know what else to, there is to say about this deck because it's a bit of a classic. It's a bit of a staple. I don't read it like any other tarot deck because it's not like any other tarot deck. Like literally by definition, it was created as a bit of an evolution of tarot. This, I believe, is DNA on the back. And as you can see, I started to edge it in a like green to match the fronts, but my pen very quickly ran out, which is a tragedy. So that is the Voyager Tarot. And then because I've also mentioned it already, the Ritual Tarot. This in comparison, where the Voyager is a mass market, cheap, readily available, this is an indie, much more expensive deck, but I think it is currently in print. Oh, this is so gorgeous. I did a full walkthrough of my first impressions of this deck. It's so beautiful. And as I was going through these two to put them back in order so I could do this comparison, I was just reminded of how intense and how evocative this deck is. It's a bit of a YouTube darling. I think it's also a bit of a YouTube Marmite deck, to be honest, but um, I personally love it. I get the hype. I do. And is it just another collage deck? Maybe. Do I love it anyway? Yes. Here is one of my favorite cards of all time, the Princess of Cups. Just 
look at her. It's very special. I have the marked edition, which has the titles on the back. So it's still like this gorgeous art card deck, but it does have the titles on the back. And I did have to refer to that when I was putting these back in order. They all make sense. Here is my other favorite card in this deck is this Ace of Pentacles. I want this framed on my wall. Um, they make sense when you look at them and some of them are pretty obvious, but some of them I definitely needed to refer to the back. Like for, I wasn't sure if this was the five or the six of pentacles at first glance, this is the six. And then this is our five here. And when I see them together, it makes sense. And I remember I really liked the, the hand here symbolizing that give and take and that kind of power dynamic that's inherent in that give and take. But yeah, the Ritual Tarot is absolutely stunning, gorgeous. In my opinion, worth it. One of my favorite collage decks. I love all of my collage decks, but I do think it's really something special, but I do also recognize it's inaccessible in various ways because of the price. And I know that the lack of titles is something some people really struggle with, but personally, I love having it in my collection. The Goddess of Love is a deck that I talk about all the freaking time. I've recently been having quite the love affair appropriately enough with this deck and the guidebook and the ethos and Gabriella Herstick's other work, uh, particularly her Sacred Sex book, which I've been reading. And I, I just adore this deck. It's feminine without being girly. And no, I don't really know what I mean by feminine, but this is, this is it without being like, girly, which again, I don't really know what I mean by that, but that is how I would describe this deck. It's, it's supposed to be a very like divine feminine, as the title would suggest, goddess of love deck. So I suppose that makes sense. But do I really know what, what feminine means to me? No. Is that the rabbit hole you need to be going down right this second? Probably not. Regardless, this is really beautiful. I really love this deck. I've really been enjoying working with this deck. I still can't decide if I'm going to trim it. And as much as I do love this deck, which like I say, is, is an awful lot, I am a little bit mm, concerned, not the right word, but I am in the back of my mind thinking that maybe the next deck I'm going to show you, which is the newest deck in my collection, it might compete with this. And really only time will tell. I will work with it. I will work with all my decks and I'll see where they fall in my collection. It's certainly not unusual for two decks to kind of compete with each other for a time, especially when they're similar in aesthetic, which you could argue all of these are because they're all collage decks. But over time, they definitely will find their place in my collection, which is the case for almost all of the decks I'm going to show you today. A couple of the oracles, actually just generally the composite collage decks, I find a little bit more interchangeable, but I'll get to that later. So this is the Goddess of Love, and then the newest deck in my collection, which doesn't have its own bag yet, the much anticipated Sistine Tarot by Rose Bay on Instagram. This is unavailable. I'm sorry to say it had a very limited time available on Make Playing Cards. I snagged myself a copy. It finally, finally arrived yesterday, and I'm immediately, I'm so in love. And I think you can see what I mean about it kind of feeling a bit similar to the Goddess of Love Tarot. Should we zoom in a little bit? I'm not gonna do a direct comparison of these two because this deck is unavailable. So it feels like that would be unhelpful and unproductive. Oh, this Six of Cups is just stunning. Um, I've just been flipping through this for the last 24 hours and gushing over it. And I think you can see why I, they have kind of similar aesthetics. There's lots of roses, there's lots of pink, there's lots of kind of similar, similar elements, but they do feel different. Um, this, the, the Sistine Tarot has additional cards for all of the zodiac signs, as well as the heavenly virtues. I think you can see how visually, aesthetically, there's a lot of similarities. They don't feel the same. And like I say, as I work with this, I'm sure it will find its place in my collection. I'm not anticipating these competing with each other. Uh, can we just take a moment? Can we have a little commotion for the Ten of Swords for this like glittery, bloody hands and knife? Like, oh God, I love it so much. In, in my first flip through of this, of the Sistine Tarot. I feel like the Sistine Tarot is a little bit more, something feels a little bit more tangible about it. Like 
it's more energetically tangible. What a wanky thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe you know what I mean, whereas the goddess of love feels a little bit more high concept energetically. And that again, that sounds like such a pretentious woo thing to say, but those are the only words I can think to describe them at this moment. So there you go. <laughs> and this, oh, it's just, oh, it's gorgeous. There's something that's not exactly softer about the Sistine Tarot, but it feels a little bit more, a little bit more grounded maybe. That's why tangible is the word that I went with because it feels a little bit more, you know? <laughs> Clearly I don't know, but anyway, so these are absolutely stunning. I would be intrigued to pair them. I think I want to work with the Sistine Tarot by itself first and kind of get to grips with the the way that it reads and the way that it feels because like look at look at these there is so much similarity in the kinds of elements that have been used and I'm not saying that this is a copy of this deck but I'm just saying the I mean there's a limit to how much you can do with analog collage and there's a lot of the same visual symbols that have been repeated like there's lots of roses there's lots of pink there's all this beautiful like clouds and so I'm obsessed with the pop culture in this deck specifically Lana and specifically the princess die cards um, love it. So I am going to stop flipping through this, but this is one of my favorite cards in the Goddess of Love, this Two of Wands, and I think this Eight of Swords might also be possibly a favorite of this deck, but I really have not been through it enough to say, but I do just think it's incredible. So those are my two kind of, I guess, feminine, but like I wouldn't say from a first, from a first shuffle, the way I described the goddess of love was like feminine but not girly. I don't know if I would describe this as feminine, which just goes to show that I don't know what feminine means. <laughs> like, oh good lord, it's beautiful. Okay, so here we have my collage, analog collage tarot decks, and I think since I've just done a little comparison of the goddess of love and the Sistine Tarot, I will do a flip through comparison of the Voyager and the Ritual Tarot. All right, so we've got the Voyager on the left and the Ritual Tarot on the right. This is one of the additional cards in the Ritual Tarot. This is the Fool's Journey. And then we've got the Fool or Fool Child, the Magician, the Priestess, the Empress, the Emperor, the Hierophant, the lovers, the chariot, justice or balance in the voyager, the hermit, the wheel or fortune, lust is an additional card in this edition of the ritual tarot, and then we have our strength cards, the hanged man, death. I do think it's interesting how much similarity there is between some of these cards. Like I noticed the Empress as well. There was a lot of symmetry almost. Art or temperance. The devil or devil's play. The tower. Okay, this is the star. This is justice. I managed to get them mixed up in my sorting of the cards. So the star, the moon, the sun, Judgment or time space in the Voyager Tarot. The world or the universe. All right, Ace of Wands. Two of Wands. Three of Wands. Four of Wands. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. And ten. The Ritual Tarot has the chords going Princess Knight queen king and the voyager is child man woman sage and our sage or king and then the cup suit i'm sorry i still think this looks like a dead pigeon two three Four of Cups, so interesting that it's anger in the Voyager Tarot. Five, six, seven, eight, 
9, 10. Beautiful. Our child slash princess, our man or knight, woman, queen, and our sage and king. Onto our sword suit, which has been renamed Crystals in the Voyager Tarot. This is a truly beautiful image. Two, three, four, five, six. I will admit I'm an absolute sucker for the crystal imagery just because it's beautiful. Seven, eight, nine, ten, and then our chords. And finally, we come to our pentacles suit, which has been renamed Worlds in the Voyager Tarot. I've already highlighted it this video, but just look at this ace of coins from the Ritual Tarot. It's beyond beautiful, in my opinion. Our two. I love that there's the, the sky, like, in both. I Obviously, they're both working from the same meanings, so there's going to be similarities in the collage, but I do think it's absolutely gorgeous. I think they're both somewhat pippish and somewhat scenic. I think the Voyager looks a little bit more pippish in the minors, and the Ritual looks a little bit more like scenic pips. There's our seven. Like, does that, does that make sense? Like this feels a little bit more pippish and this feels a little bit more scenic. But they're both pretty pippish as collage goes. Our nine. And our 10. I will also say that these titles, they're not the Thoth titles, they are just titles that the creator came up with for the tarot cards. Then our final court, our child or princess. I love this. Like the rootedness, the groundedness is gorgeous. There's also a lot more people in the courts of the Voyager tarot. It's it's analog collage, it's a lot of real people specifically in the court cards, less so throughout the rest of the deck. Our queen or woman, and our sage or king of worlds slash pentacles. So that was my little flip through comparison of the Voyager and the Ritual, and I will now move on to my analog collage oracle decks. Okay, it's already been mentioned, this is the Tantric Dakini which has been around forever <laughs> and is currently still available. As far as I'm aware, it's still in print. The cardstock is terrible, but it comes with a really big guidebook, so that kind of makes up for the price. Um, Cosmic Carrot, I adore the, some of the titles in this. It's my understanding that this is based on the major arcana and then also some of the minor arcana like there is a structure to it but I have not read the guidebook I have not done a deck study I couldn't give you a more detailed explanation than that I adore this I think it's so beautiful I really enjoy using it but I also know that I do need to do some some kind of deck study some kind of more intensive oh intensive is the wrong word but some kind of more in-depth working with this deck. This is just such a beautiful card. Flipping through this now, I feel like the Sistine Tarot is like the love child of the, well, the goddess of love. And this, like, it's got the feel of this deck with a lot of the symbols of the goddess of love and also a lot of the kind of themes of the goddess of love in the way that it feels. But it's got a lot of the same qualities of this. So... It'll be interesting to sit those three next to each other and see, and see, let's have a play. What is this whole video if not playing with my collection? I wonder if it's also the white borders that makes me kind of compare these two. The Goddess of Love, the Tantric Dakini, 
and the Sistine Tarot in the middle, the lovers in the mi oh god, that's gorgeous. Like, at least aesthetically, I feel like it's the combination of, of these two decks. Do you, do you feel me? Do you get what I mean? Like, I feel like the, the images that were used feel very, like, um, like vintage-y and feel like the tantric dakini. But then, you know, with all the pink, with all the roses, there's a lot of overlap. I think this just is. It's absolutely stunning. So, do you agree? Do you feel, and I'm not, I'm, this isn't any kind of, like, value judgment. I'm just thinking purely aesthetically while well, I've got them all out. If you needed a bridge <laughs> between the goddess of love and the tantric dakini. And like the magic, like it all just makes sense, you know? Which one was it? I think it was the star. Have I already flipped past her? Yeah, the star especially, like feels like it could be straight out of the tantric dakini. And then like, who else had a cobweb? that I saw just now, the Capricorn card, and the cobweb with the Ganesh Lord of Obstacles, and like obstacles, and then we're holding the world up, like, oh, it's good, it's so good, and then the world, and the, the, the rose and the roses, it's so good, this is one of my faves, the Seven of Wands, just visually, like, visually, yes, we've got the mountains in the background, we've got this like it's a rose and the ace of wands, it's a sacred heart and the six of wands, but visually they're so cohesive. That's what it is. I don't want to kind of imply that anyone's copying anyone else, but they're just very cohesive. But they all feel different. And is it that thing where I'm like, oh no, there are differences, I promise, so that I can justify having all three of them? Like maybe, but also I'm a grown up and I can, I can, own the things I want to own, and I want to own all three of these decks. I have no idea what this video is really going to be. I know it's going to be long, but it's just a bit of a ramble of me, like, playing with all of my collage decks. Okay, so Tantra Dakini is an analog collage oracle. This is another analog collage oracle. This is When Olga Speaks. I don't know if this is currently available. It's been on and off make playing cards. I'm hoping that there will be a second attempt on Kickstarter at some point whenever she's ready to launch that so I can get a, an addition as it was meant to be. Uh, but this is, this is so beautiful. This visually also feels like it echoes the tantric dakini with, um, I think when the images are sourced from, oh, like the, and the mm, offering and so the return. They're both absolutely gorgeous decks. And in the water and in the water, surrender like a bubble. Oh my goodness. They're totally reminiscent of each other. With the, and here the elder and this elder, oh God, it's so good. Like, let's be real, they're not worlds apart. Again, I don't want to claim that anybody's copying anyone else, but visually, they're analog collage decks with images from like the 70s, I think. National Geographic magazines from the 70s, but I also could completely be making that up. So don't, I'm not a source for that information. <laughs> Boundaries next to mean and heavy, like, oh, it's good. Uh, what was I saying? <laughs> yeah, visually they're not worlds apart. They're both taking images from kind of the same period of time. They've got the same like feel to the images that have been used. They're both analog collage they feel very different to me. They don't feel very different. They feel quite different. I don't know if it's just because I'm aware of the fact that this was quite a personal deck for the creator to make, or if I'm getting that from the cards, but this feels more personal. This feels like it's got a much closer, a much more individual perspective, whereas this has a structure to it and that kind of comes through like it's it's a bit more big picture, it's a bit more sweeping statements, it's a bit less personal. I didn't mean to be doing so many deck comparisons, but apparently that is the theme of this video. When Olga Speaks, totally beautiful, totally hoping for a second Kickstarter attempt. 
um, and I feel like she's writing a guidebook, is that correct? I'm really hoping that uh, she manages to complete that and decides to share it with us all because I will absolutely snap that up in a heartbeat. So, when Olga speaks. Okay, this is the Sustain Yourself Oracle, which is a favourite. This is by the same creator as the Voyager Tarot, so you can probably probably see the similarities in the art style. I absolutely, oh, I absolutely adore this deck. I feel like I haven't used it in a while actually, but the kind of ecology perspective that this has, I just, I really love the, the keywords that have been used and I really love this sometimes. Geese and migration, that makes total sense as a title and a keyword, but then some of them, some of them don't so much. Like, Peapod and ergonomic, I wouldn't necessarily pair those things together. Ergonomic is probably not the first thing I would use, first word I would use to describe a peapod. And if I'm thinking of something in nature that's ergonomic, peapod would not be my first thought, you know. So I really love that some of them feel really like obvious, and then some of them. I think a little bit and it kind of gives me a bit of a new perspe perspective on things and I just I love this like ecology science nature based deck like I love me a nature based deck that is more like you know we're all one with nature blah -de blah but this is like science like snake and opportunity I can't immediately bring to mind why these two fit together and so I read out the guidebook for this as well because the guidebook also has some additional, I think it's got additional keywords in the guidebook to go along with opportunity and it explains why, you know, snake is chosen and I just, oh, it's, it's beautiful. This is also a huge deck. It's got like, I think it's got like 90 cards in it or something or maybe even like 100 cards. So, you know, it's, self-knowing and lake like oh it's so good I need to pull this out more this is partly why I'm filming this video I've been feeling a little bit uninspired lately in my tarot practice and so it was just like the perfect combination of reasons to film this video like I have that new deck in I wanted to do that flip through comparison and I also I really like just playing with my decks and seeing the ones that are similar and reminding myself of some of the decks that I've got because it's been a hot minute since I pulled out the Sustain Yourself. And then finally, in this section, <laughs> not finally, but finally for now, uh, the Pocket Archetypes, or sorry, the Wild Unknown Archetypes, and I have the Pocket Edition. This does have collage elements. It's also got these inked drawn elements. So it kind of fits, it kind of doesn't. It feels more like a collage than not. So I'm including it. This is also a really fantastic oracle deck. It's all archetypes. I still haven't worked a whole ton with this. I've only had it, um, I don't know, a couple months. The guidebook is super cool. It's functionally impossible. It's so tiny, <laughs> but um, I really want to get into like the spreads and stuff. And the that there's a whole structure to this. I do feel like Kim Cran's really, really thought this through. It doesn't feel like this was just slapped together to make a deck, to sell a deck, to make some money. Like I do feel like this has a real concept behind it, has a real kind of framework to it and has been very considered, which I really appreciate because I like, I like decks like that. Like the Tantra Dakini has a system. The Sustain Yourself, I don't think it has a system in terms of like a structure of the cards, but it definitely has a lot of concept behind it and this like ecology and this idea of sustaining ourselves as a species on the planet is also in there so it's it's not just pretty pictures and keywords the other oracle decks that i'm going to show you that are digital composite collage those are kind of just pretty pictures and keywords and you know they have their place in my collection they have their place in my practice but i don't get excited about them in the same way so this is absolutely, it's so cool. And because it's an archetype deck, I've been pulling it out a lot, but I'm definitely finding that it reads, not that it reads differently, but it's just, it's useful in a different way to most other Oracle decks. 
I like to pull this out as like a something to embody or something to like an aspect of of myself to kind of step into or bring to the forefront or however you want to phrase it oh I love how the self pops up when I'm talking about aspects of myself but um like I like using this in a slightly it just has a function that's a bit more specific than a lot of oracle decks and I really appreciate that because you know I've got a fair few collage decks and it's it wouldn't be worth it if they were all completely interchangeable and I don't think any of them really are interchangeable I suppose you could argue that the tarot decks that I have are somewhat interchangeable because a tarot is a tarot is a tarot but I disagree because I like using them all well the Sistine tarot is new like less than 48 hours in my hands new so I'm sure it will find its place but the others they all feel distinctive in the way that I conceptualize them in my brain so this was the wild unknown archetypes all right moving on to my like composite collage digital collage decks I have two that are very similar I have the golden tarot by Cat Black and the influence of the angels I think both of the well both of these decks are still in print but not in these editions this was the glossy edition that I've trimmed this is the glossy edition of the influence of the angels they're both available now in linen cardstock which I'm sure is a much nicer experience than what I've got but you can still get these decks is my point and these are similar because they are composite digital collage from existing artworks the golden tarot is I think late medieval early renaissance and the influence of the angels I don't think has a particular time period that the images have been pulled from I might be wrong about that but I don't think there was I don't think that was a driving factor in the artwork that was chosen I think it was more about the final result so these do kind of compete a little bit in my collection I've had the golden tarot for so long I'm sorry but this this little like I guess like little cherub guy face is so fucking funny <laughs> uh yeah the golden tarot I've had for years it's very special to me I did a lot of my Rider Waite Smith learning with this deck they're both pretty solidly Rider Waite Smith clones interesting that our eight of cups here is walking toward instead of walking away though i think realistically the influence of the angels is one that is not going to stay in my collection very long just because i haven't made much of a concerted effort to get to know it and i kind of do just think of it as a bit like the golden tarot but not quite so i think i either need to change that or just admit that i'm not going to and maybe move it along but i do think it's very cool I really like the guidebook. I spoke about this recently in my guidebooks video as well. And I want to love it because I think the angel imagery is cool. I kind of want to trim it the same way I've trimmed the golden tarot, but I also kind of don't want to commit to that in case I regret it. So <laughs> absolutely no decision happening there. All right, MJ Cullinane. I've just pulled out one here. I've pulled out the Enchanted Fraxa. This is, ooh, really zoomed in. This is the mass market edition that came out last autumn. And I feel like to varying degrees, her decks are all quite collage-y, but they are very much this like digital artwork. But then like, this is a good example here. We've got this like climped pattern happening and some of the cards more than others look very kind of collaged and and pulled together and I'm trying to see if there's a more obvious example like like here we've got this same bird that's been kind of copied and the way that textures are layered over like certain things like it feels it's definitely got this it's it's interesting it's this like digital painting but also collage kind of style to it I really like MJ Cullinane's decks um I did a complete a complete 180 on them because initially I was like no and then I got the Guardian of the Night and I completely fell in love and and lo and behold the whole collection kind of went from there my point is this is a collage deck in my collection kind of which is why I say like a digital composite it's in that like genre 
in my in my collection. It's definitely got a collage feel to it. And this is one that again, I just need to pull out more often. I'm also thinking of, of narrowing down my MJ Clinane collection a little bit. I'm thinking that the Cat's Tarot is maybe not long, not long for this world, not long for my collection. Uh, I think I've kind of reached saturation point. It's like the Grimalkins was in the place that this was always supposed to be. I love an MJ Clinane deck and they've definitely got that like digital art, but also collage style. So it fit in this video. And then finally, this is what I think of as like true digital collage. Whereas there was some like original art and drawing and like kind of that painterly style happening in the MJ Clinane. In these, it's photos that have been layered together. Okay, so I've got the rose on the left here and the healing waters oracle on the right. And as you can see, they are digital composite photos layered with all these like lighting effects and all this hazy softness. I can't remember who said it, but somebody commented in one of my videos a million years ago that the rose tarot is very washed out and kind of hard to see what's going on. And I kind of have to agree. The uh, healing waters is a little bit more defined, a little bit more saturated. This is a freaking beautiful image though. The fertile void. I don't know about that, but these are oracle decks and these are my favorite kind of oracle deck in that we have a title and then some keywords or little key phrases, which I like to use to, I was going to say journal prompts. That's not what I mean, tarot prompts. So I'll like pull a card from one of these decks and then pull tarot cards for like each of these. The thorn is my card for the day. And then I'll pull a tarot card for like protection, boundaries, and clear communication. The rose tarot with the, not the rose tarot, the rose oracle with the Sistine tarot. That could be fun. They could be pretty together. Different kinds of collage. Anyway, I also obviously want her latest one, um, the stones one that's recently come out because they'll go nicely in the collection. Uh, these decks are as close to like the, the love and light as I will get. There's a couple of cards that I don't love in these. This one is very divine feminine-y, which is interesting as they pull Brothers of the Rose with Sacred Masculine, but it's a bit like Sacred Feminine in a way that I don't love, but it's not too, I can, I can handle it. And then I think, I think there's maybe like an Atlantis card and something that's like when we start talking about activation and codes, I'm like, this is, it's getting a bit adjacent to like starseed territory and all that bullshit that I don't really, don't really truck with. These are the final collage decks in my collection. And I don't reach for these often. I knew that when I got them, but they do have their place. And sometimes I want to look at a pretty picture and have something tell me that like, I have what it takes and the wisdom with is within and to follow the blah de blah and acting on visions and you know everything's going to be all fine sometimes that's what you need you know and now because i've said it i absolutely must pair this with the sistine tarot and see what i think i have so many collage decks especially like analog collage tarot decks on my wish list let me know your favorites anyway god it really is very washed out isn't it okay that's a little bit i think i only have room <laughs> to do one one next to it because I think this has the softness oh god they're beautiful together this has the softness in the imagery to kind of work with the rose tarot I don't know the rose oracle I don't know if I've ever tried to pair this with the goddess of love but I suspect that the goddess of love is too visually it's harsher it's bolder it's a little bit more kind of intense and I feel like it would overpower visually the Rose Oracle. But I think the, oh God, they're beautiful. I think these really work. I don't know how they'll read. Oh God, the return with the Eight of Hearts. That's so often about like leaving something, but like a new story and like maybe you're leaving something behind, but you're returning to yourself. Ooh, that's good lineage with the king of swords and the king is dead with the king is dead with lineage oh after the rain nine of wands 
yeah, I think these are going to be really beautiful together. See here, Codes of the Seeds. This is like one of them that I'm like, eh. And I would probably take out if I hadn't dropped these stupid boxes on the floor earlier and got everything all mixed up. Okay. Oh, and there's that beautiful Eight of Swords again. Okay, so that is my collage deck collection, as well as some comparisons of the similar ones. Oh, we're throwing things everywhere. This is why I don't try and do cute, like, outro setups. Uh, yeah, that is everything I wanted to share with you in this video. Please let me know what your favorite collage decks are. I have so many on my wish list. Of course, I can't think of any off the top of my head, but I promise you they're there. But, um, yeah, let me know what you think. Let me know if you enjoyed. Let me know if you got the Sistine Tarot and if you're as in love with it as I am right now. And I'm gonna leave it there and let you go because this has been a long one to film. Thank you so much for watching, especially if you have made it this far. I really do hope you've enjoyed. Give me a like if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't already and you wanna see more from me. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.